Start off, we're going to sync the sub. Um, that is the C key on the C board, or on the uh, keyboard. It takes a while for the bladder to fill up, so you'll notice it starts to sync. Uh, meanwhile, I have the, uh, the operation here. You notice the fins are up right now. On the bottom, that's the W key. Back to center. Uh, down. Back up. And the rudder goes left and right with the keyboard. Thruster operations. Reverse thrust, forward thrust. It tends to work a little bit better when it's actually, actually after it's sunk. So we're going to that to fully sink um, into the water. It does take quite a bit of time. Um, that, this is going to be solved later on with a more powerful pump. So, so talk about the floating portion of the sub. Okay, the floating portion of the sub is the antenna. That is connected through a pass-through at the very front end of the sub. Um, you can see that the, the antenna floats in the water. Uh, it's just there to keep it dry and keep it out of the water so that we can actually communicate to the sub using a wireless connection instead of a hard wire connection. Um, this will lead to easier testing in the thermal environment. So, um, currently we're going to do a reverse thrust here underwater. We'll turn the Plane's going up. It does go up a little bit. It's going to scrape along the side of the tub. And you can go back down in reverse as well. Push it to the bottom of the tub, right about there. That's the full operation. Uh, there is a leak detector circuit on the sub as well. Uh, when that flips, it basically sets the bow planes in the up position and it will float the sub. But I currently have that operation engaged now. Notice the float detector just tripped. Or the uh, leak detector just tripped. And the reason why the bow planes are in the up position is so that you can use the thruster to assist in ascent. Go. Hello, I'm Chester Slosher uh, from the South Dakota School of Mines Technology. This is Rachel Josephs and myself. Uh, our senior design project is the power system. Uh, you can see here we have, this is one contained battery container and it has the power supply in it, or the battery, and then the power switching boards to control everything. And we have two of them just sitting on the table. Um, right now, if you look on the computer, we, he's running the motor at a low, a low idle, and anyway, so if you turn, it's about 0.21 amps, just a really little amount. So if you turn up the motor quite a bit, Richard, you can see the total current goes up to 22 amps, and it has two batteries engaged on the dirty bus, which is what the motor's running off of, and one battery off the clean bus. Now, if you turn it back down, Richard. It moves back. It takes that. It should take that. There we go. It took that that extra battery off the bus, and now it just has one on each bus because our amps have went way have went back to zero. Okay. Explain the MBB. 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 What about it? Oh, and here we have the MBB. It's it's three redundant microcontrollers running together. Um, if one fails, the next will take over. If that one fails, the next will take over. So that we have control in a in any scenario in which we have, like if we have one fail. My name is Richard Banks, also from the School of Mines and Technology, and along with myself and Jack Fowler, who's a mechanical engineer, we have the propulsion system. So if you want to come a little closer here, I'll talk about the components. We have two circuit boards here. Both of these are uh, 18 mega 128 B1 uh, on X mega explain boards. 
the board that's currently powered up is for the main engine. We don't currently have the secondary engine operating, so we're just going to demonstrate the main engine for today. Over here is an oscilloscope. You can see a pulse width modulation on there. Currently at 1.5 milliseconds, we're in idle with the motors. So what we're going to do now with, uh, with Rachel and Chester's power system is we're going to take the motor in the underway mode, which is why the U is here, uh, from full reverse power to full forward power. So at first we'll do that right here with the camera on the board, and you can probably hear the motor come up. So we're bringing that up. You're seeing a millivoltage there. That's on a potentiometer for a test throttle. So I'm able to manipulate the engine by reference to the analog to digital value off of the throttle. And when we get up to about 2,000, we're in full power mode uh, forward on the thruster. As we bring this back, we'll cycle back through idle. And now we're going in reverse. So you can hear the motor running over there, and it's in reverse, and we'll show that here in a minute. We'll bring this down to about there for full reverse. That's the motor cavitating a little, or the propeller cavitating in the water a little bit. And we'll bring that back out. Okay, once you put the camera back on me again. So when we come back, we change the configuration. We'll show the system ID mode. But before we do that, um, let's take a look at the motor. So, if Rachel, you'll go over there and just film the, get the propeller into the view there. We'll take this back up to full forward again. You can barely see it. Yeah, you can see it. back we'll show the uh, system ID mode. Go. Okay, we're back here and we're demonstrating now the system ID mode. If you do a close-up of the board now you'll see main number one ish, uh, engine is now in system ID mode. Below that you'll see a voltage currently about negative 330 volts. And that's a signal coming off the force transducer that's connected to the assembly in the tank, what we'll show here in a minute. So uh, as you can see as the motor comes to idle you sit at about zero volts and then the force transducer ras rapidly ramp ramps up to its max value indicating that the most force is being imparted on the uh, frame itself. Before we walk over and look at that, we'll take a look at the oscilloscope here. You can see the same pulse width modulation as before, only this time but not being controlled by throttle. This time it's being controlled by an algorithm which takes the sign of a value uh, to add um, current to the motor. So the current is changing by PWM as the value of the sign changes. So as any sign value between 0 and 90 degrees, the first uh, change is abrupt and then as you get close to 90 degrees, the, the change is slowed down quite a bit as you can see there. We're coming up to full value there. That's about 90 degrees. And now we're backing back down through the sign down to 0 degrees. So you can see the motor is only going forward in this mode. We're only testing the forward mode of the, of the motor, not, not reverse. Now if we walk over here and take a look at the motor, I can show you some of the features over here. It's very difficult to see, but as you can see, the motor's down there running. And then right in here is where our force transducer is, and it's connected to that aluminum bar, and it's mounted to the frame, and it's been balanced here. You can see the weights we have on the end of the moment arm to balance it so that when it's at idle power, we see the zero volts. And uh, that balance was done last year and actually it was in still pretty good shape. So that concludes our demonstration. If you have any questions about what we're doing, uh, come see us at the fair. I'm going to show some of the data and the MATLAB plot of all this data, so come by and see me and I'll be glad to show you that. Okay.